Welcome to the post-game show, and a happy one it is. Presented by the Maroon Club, enhancing 23 Division I sports. Join the Maroon Club today. Our player of the game is always presented by Coca-Cola. We invite you to experience the Coke side of life. Fran O'Hanlon, probably a little tired. Nick Linder, probably very tired. Here they are. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Uh, Coach, first of all, thank you very much. I sure didn't want to talk to you after a loss to Bucknell here at home. But, you know, we talked a lot about the adjustments you guys were having to make as teams adjusted to you. Joey Tuzinski, Seth Hendricks struggle offensively. How about guys picking up the slack, Nick and Seth? Yeah, they did a great job with that. And the first half, as you know, we struggled. We had nine turnovers in the first half. We were talking about we have to curl more. We got to really collapse the defense because they're really staying home with us. I thought we did a much better job of running offense in the second half, curling, cutting harder, you know, all those things. And, you know, this is a great win for us. You know, it, did, it was looking bleak in the beginning, you know, uh, after the first half. For a basketball purist, it was a fun game to watch. The adjustments were, were so obvious, and, and both coaches really pushing all the right buttons. You know, Coach, I remember early on, Nick Lindner was off to such a great start this year. I almost had the sense that the other guys got into a comfort zone where all they could do was pass and catch. They almost forgot how to play. Exactly. Well, as I said, when we stand around and we don't move, and we took some bad shots in the first half, I don't know if it was the you know, pressure of playing the number one team here and uh, we kind of were walking in mud. And, uh, and I didn't say much at halftime other than, hey, guys, if you don't start correcting some of these things, it's just going to be more of the same. Well, I think John Feinstein would take issue with that because he gave us a kind of a, a, a thought of what your halftime talk might have been like when he wrote the book. He spent some time there. Uh, Coach, before I let you go, talk about the defense. We talk a lot about your offense. It's so much fun to watch. You guys are prolific when you're scoring the basketball, but it was really the defense that brought you back. It was. We really played good defense. But, you know, when you score some points, you know, it allowed us to set up our defense. In the first half, we weren't scoring. And uh, we're such a product of, uh, of the momentum of our offense, you know. But I, I just thought, you know, we really defended well. I talked to them before the game. I said, listen, if we allow them to score into the 70s, I don't think we're going to win this game. And at halftime, they had 38. And I was like... I'm, uh, I think I'm going to be a prophet here. Well, I told those guys, a game in the, if, if Lafayette wins a game in the 60s, they're going to win at Bucknell's game. If Bucknell wins a game in the 80s, they're going to win at Lafayette's game. It was in the 80s. You guys prevailed. It wasn't the way it was drawn up. But I'll tell you what, Coach, this was a hard-fought win and well-deserved. Tell me about it. You got it, Coach. <laughs> Go have a, a beverage of your choice. Congratulations. Hey, Nick Lidner, uh, you know, I'll, tell, I'll talk to you a little bit about what I talked to Coach about. Seth and Joey and the perimeter game has really carried you guys early in the season. Now teams are adjusting. Talk about the overall offensive adjustment and how things are opening up for you. Well, uh, uh, as you get in the Patriot League, you start to uh, know teams better, and they know Seth and Joey can shoot the lights out. So they just uh, concentrate on them and hug them, and it leaves driving lanes open for me. One-on-one uh, -on -one post opportunities for Dan, so uh, it works out. As teams adjust to you, Nick, it's almost your forced to dig deeper into the offense, to drill down and learn more. I mean, this is like a snowflake offense. No two uh, moves, no two screens, no two cuts are exactly alike. There's always so much more to learn. Are you finding that as teams adjust to you, it's forcing you to dig deeper and understand the offense even better? Uh, absolutely, but I think that's what our offense is built for. It's not it's not quick hitters. It's not uh, for one player. It's, it's a motion offense and passing game, and uh, when we do that, we're tough to guard. One other thing, Nick, before I let you go, I, I know down the stretch there, things got a little uh, a little physical, uh, a little chippy at times. You guys know each other. The guys in this league compete. Talk about what it was like with you and uh, Ryan Frazier going at it a little bit. Uh, that's just competition. I mean, he's a, he's a great competitor. He's an extremely good athlete. And uh, I know he's going to bring toughness, and that's just my nature as well. So uh, it's just good fun. It's great always to see two great competitors going at it. Nick, congratulations on a great game. Good luck next time. Thank you very much. You got it. Gary, uh, John, hey, John, you bring a lot of excitement, man. You're welcome <laughs> back anytime. This ain't a bad gig. Where's Dan? Back to you guys. Fran just said that I could come back since you guys won. Well, yeah. But with he, about 17 minutes left, I was going to be banned from the entire city of Easton. Everybody gets a vote for John Leon, I think. <laughs> 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 All right, there. What the Lafayette did is get down by 15 at the at the half, pick up the 15 in regulation, and win the ball game by 10 to go with their victory. All right, here is John Feinstein with tonight's highlights.
Well, early in the game, it was a lot of Bucknell, a lot of good interior passing there. Seemed like they could get the ball down low in the second half anytime they wanted to. They were getting on balance shots, but eventually it turned around. As Fran O'Hanlon said, a lot better cuts, a lot better curls. There's a great offensive putback by Dan Trisk. Really nice passing game in the second half. Didn't you think, Gary? I did. By Lafayette. They just found the right guys. Trisk seemed to never miss throughout that second half, and when he wasn't shooting, he was passing the ball well. And then Nick Lindner, the player of the game, he was the difference because you knew Trist was going to give you a big game because he'd be doing it so consistently. But he was able to get the ball to the basket and every once in a while pull up and shoot a three. And here's a critical basket by Hendricks in the last minute with Lafayette down two that tied the game. Then we go into the overtime here. Tough shot by Casper. But then again, there we go with Lindner again and again and again. And a beautiful pass there by Dan Trist to set up a key bucket. And then it looks like the same play, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's not. It's another basket by Lindner, and that's why he was the player of the game. Although Dan Trist certainly should be 1A as player well, of the game. Well, absolutely. 29 points and 11 rebounds. A double-double for Dan Trist. Can't let you get out of here without your the title of your new book. The title of the new book is The Triangle, because, you know, the research triangle down in North Carolina – Dean Smith, Jim Valvano, Mike Krzyzewski, arguably the greatest coaching triangle in history. And the greatest sports writer in history uh, you're, right here you're in John nice. Feinstein. Great to D be with you again. Don't wait so long to come back. No, thanks for having me. It was great fun. All right, here's how it all shook out tonight. The 74 Bucknell points on 27 field goals. They had nine triples in the ball game, 11 for 16 from the foul line. They now are 12 and 12 and 7 and 4 in the Patriot League. For the Lafayette Leopards, their 84 points came on 29 field goals. They were 6 for 14 from three-point land, 20 for 25 from the free throw line, and down the stretch, they just refused to miss foul shots. The leading scorers tonight, Tris with 29, Lindner with 26, Bucknell with four people in double figures, Starkey a dozen, Fallon a dozen, 13 for Hawes, and 17 for J.C. Schau, but he only got two points in the entire second half. Lafayette goes to 14 and 8 and now 6 and 5 in the Patriot League. They are one game behind Bucknell and we'll see what Colgate does tomorrow. They could very well be one game out of first place when things shake out after tomorrow night. We'll be back with Lafayette basketball a week from tonight. You can catch the men Monday night when they take on Loyola on the CBS Sports Network. So for John Feinstein, for John Leone who will be back next to me for the next ball game. We thank you for spending time with us. I'm Gary Laubach. Good night, everybody.